This tutorial continues the uh, previous tutorial on Hebrew verb layout. This is part 1b. Where we last left off was to uh, select the copy feature of the copy Bible verses of Ligus Bible software. We can go ahead and exit out of that. Go back to our Microsoft Word document. Make sure uh, that we go underneath here and we can do the control V for uh, control paste uh, or you can go up to here and uh, bring in paste. We can get rid of the uh, heading for the chapter because all we need is the uh, verses and we can go ahead and remove the beginning part or the last uh, part of that. This lets us know we're in Hebrews or Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 we can also go ahead and remove uh, that little part of verse 4, the next verse, and it also gets rid of the uh, endnote or footnoting so we don't have th that to contend with. All right, so right now we have Hebrew text and the Hebrew text underneath it. But now we want to bring it uh, verse by verse. So the easiest thing to do is go ahead and highlight the first line, the first verse, Control X, which is Control Copy come to the end of the first verse, come down two lines, come up one, hit the control V for paste. Now we want to make sure that we have it uh, right aligned. Come grab the next verse, control X for control copy or control cut. Come down two lines, come back up one, control V or paste and write a line. Last verse, control X for control cut, control V for paste, and we'll write a line. All right, so now we have the Hebrew uh, verses with the English right underneath it. it. Enables us to be able to analyze what's going on both in Hebrew and in English. All right, now we want to begin to break it down into clauses. This will help us for whatever profile we would like to look at. So this is the stage for any Hebrew text uh, that uh, you, this is the next step for any Hebrew text that you need to apply. First verse is actually rather easy because it is one clause in and of itself. So how do you uh, know where to break down the Hebrew verse into clauses? Well, you have two main helps. You have the Hebrew verb system, uh, so mainly any of the, especially the finite verbs, as well as English punctuation from the New American Standard. So if you take a look at the first verse, you notice that there's no punctuation except for the period at the end, and there's only one Hebrew verb form. So in this case, we do not need to break down the first verse into any smaller clauses. But if you take a look at verse 2, you notice that you have one, two, three Wayak to verbs, which of course begin clauses in and of themselves. So right off the bat, you know that you will have at least three clauses to work with in this second verse. You also notice that there is at least one comma and, of course, one period. So that also is a clue that there's going to be some clausal breakdown uh, within verse 2. What I suggest is that you go from the back of the verse rather than from the front. This way it saves a couple stages of the cutting and pasting. So, if we go to the last part of the Hebrew line, we notice that there is a Waikato verb and then one word in Hebrew after that. Don't worry if you don't know what every Hebrew word means. That's why you have the New American Standard text there to kind of help you. So what I do is go ahead and highlight that and cut that. Now, next step is to come where the clause actually uh, breaks in the English text, the New American Standard, Put the uh, cursor there and, and hit enter three times. One, two, three. Come up one, and then control V, and that pastes the Hebrew clause with the English uh, text right underneath it. Let's do that again with the uh, uh, next from the last clause from verse two. We notice that we go up to the way to verb, control X. And here we have the English punctuation, the comma here, to kind of help us uh, to know where the break is. Once again, put the cursor in between where the break is in the English text. Come down three returns, 
three enters and come up one. And there we have the three clauses of verse two, all which begin with the Waitu verb. Now, we're working here with an historical narrative text, and that's uh, very easy to identify where clauses break down with the number of Waitu verbs. But we would use this same type of thinking to uh, do any Hebrew text from any genre. All right, next in verse 3, we have uh, some complications, I suppose you might call them, that we need to identify, and also how to uh, identify what direct speech uh, acts are going on in the verse. All right, so if we begin from the back of the verse, we notice, uh, even in English, that there's a punctuation here after stone, and so the last clause, and they use tar for mortar. And so we can see here that that's that last clause. So we go ahead and control X, come up to where that is breaking in the English text, come down three returns, come up one. Now we notice that there's a, a Waikato verb there, a blue verb, and so uh, that's going to begin the next to the last clause again, and they used brick for stone. So once again, we highlight that, control X, and bring back down three enters. Now uh, this last clause, or the beginning of the clause of verse 3, uh, we notice that there is a Waito verb that starts, so we know that that, of course, begins a clause. Of course, that pretty much goes without saying uh, whenever a verse uh, is begun with a verb. But notice that we have quoted material. Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. We have a number of verbs that appear within that direct speech act. And so we might be tempted to go ahead and break those down in individual clauses because that's what we've done with the narrative text. But in narrative, I recommend that you keep uh, the direct speech acts all together on one line so that you can begin to look at the text uh, in a more discourse analysis perspective by looking at the speech act as an entire uh, act in and of itself. So how do we identify what are direct speech acts? Well, of course, you have the uh, quotation marks to let you know there. So what I'd like to do is use a feature that Microsoft Word allows you to do. And there's where the speech act begins with the uh, verb come, and then, of course, the two imperfect verbs afterwards. Now, in the home feature, if you go to uh, this little icon area here, you notice there's a drop-down list of all sorts of options. Select outside border, and that puts then a border all the way around the Hebrew text. That is very helpful now for uh, students who are looking at uh, this verb layout to identify uh, narrative speech from direct speech or quoted material. So this is really the basics of how to uh, break down the Hebrew into uh, clauses using the New American Standard as an interlinear, and thus ends the part 2 or 1b of how to create a Hebrew verb layout. Thank you.